Hi, sixth grade. I hope you had a restful weekend. All right, let's get started. So remember that in this chapter, we've been learning about circles. And so just as a refresher, the formula for the circumference of a circle with the diameter is pi times the diameter. Or you can think about it as 2 times um, pi times the radius, okay, in terms of the radius. So these are the formulas for the circumference of a circle. And circumference means the perimeter of the circle. Uh, we also learned about the area of a circle, and the formula is only given in R. I mean, you can also figure it out with D, but, you know, it's just given in R. Um, and so it is pi R squared. Now, before we continue um, to use the formula for circumference to solve real-world problems, I just want to give you a heads up that there's a lot of examples and very thorough and... Um, time-consuming guided practices. Um, because I don't want this video to go on for a super long time, I am going to take my time with explaining the examples, but with the guided practice, I might just um, zoom through it in terms of I'll explain the steps and I'll show you the work and you can just pause the video to see how it matches up with your understanding and how you've been doing your work, okay? Um, and we'll practice more on um, Thursday if you would like um, to review this, okay, on Thursday, okay, during our live session. So also feel free to just, um, if you need to, if it's like a lot for you to do, feel free to use this lesson and just do it um, spread out amongst two days instead of just cramming it all in in one day, okay? Um, so yeah, just kind of see what you can handle for today, okay? Um, and spread it out if you need to. All right, well, let's get started. <laughs> okay, so let's look at this example, and I'm just going to make my video screen a tad larger because I'm going to show you some work on my mini whiteboard. And it says a circular mat has a diameter of 53 centimeters. Okay, so I drew that circular mat right here and with a diameter of 53 centimeters. Lily wants to sew a decorative braid around the mat. Okay, so she wants to sew a braid around the mat. And then it says how many centimeters of braid does she need? So we have to use the circumference formula. Okay. Because they already give us the diameter, I want to use um, the formula with the diameter, which is pi times d. And um, so I'm going to input in what I know, and they said to use 3.14 as an approximation um, for pi. And I'm going to input in 53 for d. And then I did the work here. If you're curious of how I did the work, you can pause the video. Okay. And I got, it's approximately 166.51 centimeters, but it says here, give your answer rounded to the nearest tenth. Okay, so this is the hundredth and this is the tenth there. Okay, so the nearest tenth is 166.5 centimeters. So this is our answer right here. Okay, here's another example. Um, it says a metal worker cuts out a large semicircle with a diameter of 28 centimeters. Okay, so I see the semicircle here. Um, then the metal worker cuts a smaller semicircle ding, um, out of the larger one and removes it. The diameter of the semicircular piece that is removed is 14 centimeters. Find the distance around the shape of the smaller semicircle after the smaller semicircle is removed. So you want to find the um, semicircular arc here plus the semicircular arc here plus this here. So you want to find um, just the distance around the shape. Okay. So first, let's look at this here. 
I see that this would be a circle, but we only are interested in the semicircular arc of that smaller circle, okay? And so please look at the blue column here, okay? So the semicircular arc is one half times pi times d, and I'm using, because it's half of the <coughs> circumference of a circle, right? Because it's a semicircular arc, so I'm doing half of pi times d. And so for pi, we're gonna input in 22 sevenths times 14, and I see I'm going to change one half. I'm going to change 14 to 14 holes. Okay, you see that? 14 over 1. And then this makes it pretty easy, these numbers, because I see, ooh, 22 and 2. So then the 2 crosses out, and that becomes 11, right? And then 14 and a 7. Ooh, I like that. The 7 crosses out, and that becomes a 2. So it's 1 times 11 times 2, which is just 11 times 2, which is 22 centimeters of that um, smaller semicircular arc. Okay? Now look here. Look at the bigger semicircular arc. Okay? So here's the whole circle, and here is the semicircular arc of the bigger one. Okay? And look at the red over here, please. Okay? Um, so the semicircular arc is half times pi times d, which is half times 22 sevenths, because that's our approximation for pi, times the diameter of this um, circle would be 14 plus 14, which is 28. And they also tell us here in the first sentence here is 28. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to change the 28 into a fraction, 28 holes. Okay. And then again, these I love these numbers because 22 and 2. The 2 cancels up, and that becomes 11, 28, and a 7, right? The 7 cancels out, and that becomes a 4. So we have 1 times 11 times 4, which is just 11 times 4, which is 44 centimeters, okay? And now, we're going to add our semicircular arc here, our semicircular arc here, plus this here, which is 14 centimeters. And when you add it, it becomes... 80 centimeters, and so that's our answer for um, that example. All right, yet another example. I told you we have a lot of examples to practice with. Um, so the shape of the tabletop is made up of a semicircular, of a semicircle and a quadrant. Find the distance around the tabletop. Use 3.14 as an approximation for pi. Okay. So first, let's look at the first um, circle that I see. So I see that circle, but I only want the semicircular arc over there, okay? And I notice here, to find this, I need to know the diameter here of the circle. Well, what I also notice here, this is my quadrant, isn't it? Quadrant of a larger circle there, okay? Like I'll show you the quadrant, okay? Right, this is my quadrant. So if this is my um, quadrant, then I know that this is my radius of my circle, right? And then this would be the radius of my circle too, of this green circle, okay? And so that means my radius here of the green circle would be 60, but we're not talking about the radius, right? Here with this blue circle, this would be the diameter, right? So that would be 60, okay? So, um, look, at the, look at the purple, please, okay? So we've got our semicircular arc is 1 half times pi times c, and um, because it's half of the circle, right, of the circumference, which is half times 3.14, which we use as an approximation for pi, times and then our diameter is 60, right? And I like this. I'm going to do half of 60, which is 30. And I'm, that's 30 times 3.14. And I did it over here. Okay, if you want to take a look at my work, okay? Which I got to be 94.20 inches, okay? Now, we already talked about the quadrant, okay? So this is the circle that I see. And here's my quadrant, okay? And my quadrant is one-fourth of the circle, right? So 
what I'm going to do is the quadrant arc is one fourth times the um, circumference. And I'm going to use my um, circumference formula with R in it because I notice here, if you take a look here, okay, this 60 is R, okay, it's a radius, it's not the diameter, right, of this circle, and it's one fourth of this main circle, of the green circle. So, um, one fourth times two is actually a half, okay, and that becomes a half times pi times r. And I'm going to input in my values for pi as 3.14 and r as 60. And then I'm going to do half of 60, which is 30. Now I have 30 times 3.14, and I did my work here in the middle. So you can pause the video to take a look at it. And I got 94.20 inches. Okay. But the question tells me I want to find the distance around the whole tabletop. So I didn't find it around all the entire tabletop yet because I have to account for this side of the table. So I figured out this side, I figured out this side, and now I know this side. So I'm going to add 94.20 plus 94.20 plus 60 and I get 248.40 inches as my answer. I'll circle my answer because there's a lot of work on this board. Okay. Feel free to pause the video to just make sure you're understanding where and how and why um, we're using certain equations or certain formulas I mean, for the certain parts of the circumference. Okay, um, so now it's your turn. Okay, and you notice that there's three guided practices, right? Okay, so I want you to try and um, just do one, two, and three. But we're gonna, I'm just gonna go through the steps really quickly, okay? And you can just pause the video to see, um, to check your answer with what I got, okay? All right, so I'll see you probably. Um, in a little bit. <laughs> it might take you a while. It took me a while to write it all out on the board. So, all right. Um, try your best. Hello, how was it? Okay, well, let's look at number one first, okay? And I'm going to just make my video just a tad bigger so you can see the work for number one, okay? So, I'm not going to read it because I'm assuming that you read it, okay? And so, this is my work for number one. Okay, and um, it's just finding the circumference of the moon, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and so just notice what I did. Go pause the video and see. And for A, it says longer answer to the nearest 10 kilometers. And I notice here when I get my answer, um, I got um, 109,020.8. But to the nearest 10, I have to look at the 10 spot here, okay? All right, the 10s, right? And so that'll just be 20, okay? So 109,020 kilometers. And then part B says longer answer to the nearest 1,000. So then here, that's my 1,000s place. So it'll be 109,000 kilometers. All right, look at number two. Now, number two, um, I noticed that we have these two circles here, right? And so that means it's two semicircles here, okay? And then actually the two semicircles have the same diameter, okay? So it's two times, because um, there's two of the semicircles, right? Times, and then the semicircular, semicircular arc is half times the circumference, and that actually becomes pi times d, all right? And so I work it out, and I input 3.14 as my values, and there's some work as well for the two semicircular arcs, and it becomes 16.328. Now, I'm not rounding right away when I do this. I'm going to round last, okay? 
because you want to try to get your um, your answer as exact as possible or your approximation as close to the actual answer as possible. So don't round right away, okay? You round it last. Now, after that, you see that there's um, a semicircular arc right there in blue, okay? And so the semi-arc is... Um, Oh, I don't think I did this right because pi times d is the circumference but I gotta do half of this and I didn't do half of this did I okay so I gotta do one half times and then this would equal one half times which would equal one half times this okay which is equal to I'm just gonna do it really quickly on here okay so 32 point 656 times 0.5 and that's 16.328 okay All right and so I have 16.328 oh plus 16.328 Okay, and so that should equal, let's see, a 6 and a 1, 5, 6, 2, 1, 3, 32.656, but it says to round your answer to the nearest inch, so that's the whole number, so I'm going to look at my 2, and it's a 0. 0.6, so it'll approximately be 33 um, inches. That's my answer. Okay, so that's for number two. Okay. Yeah, that's for number two. Okay. And number three. Oof. Okay. <laughs> um, so, let's see. Let's look at number three. Trying to get my... It is. Okay, so um, again, I'm assuming you read it, so um, here's the word for number three. Oof, it's a doozy. Alright, so I'm going to first look at this semicircular arc over here. Okay, um, so here's my actual circle, so it's half of that. Okay, so look at my purple work here for that green semicircular arc. Okay, and then I get it to be 37.68 centimeters, okay? And then next, I have my quadrant here, okay? So here's my circle, and this is one-fourth of my quadrant, right? So I quadrant arc is one-fourth times 2 pi r, okay? And then I did my work here, and then that's about, that is 18.84 square centimeters, or centimeters, not square centimeters, sorry, okay? And then, so I want to find this plus this, and then I have to add this and this as well, right? Um, and so that is 12 plus 12, which is 24, okay? So I added 37.68 from here, which is my green part, plus my um, blue quad quadrant arc, <laughs> um, which is here, 18.84 plus... Let's see, this 12 and 12, which means 24. So I added it and I got 80.52 centimeters. And I can circle it because this is my final answer. Okay. Oh, well, let me show you the super cute panda. Oh, yeah. Celebrating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so now we're going to use a formula for the area of a circle to solve real world problems. And let's look at this example. We're going to do the area now. Okay, I'm going to just make my video screen a tad larger so you guys can see. Okay, so it says a jewelry designer is making a pendant. The pendant will be a circular disc, center O, 
can you say that's the pendant um, with the circular hole cut out of it can you say that's the cut out hole the radius of the disc is 35 millimeters find the area of the pendant we use 22 sevenths as an approximation for pi okay. all right so first i'm gonna take actually i'm just gonna find the area of this whole circle so i filled it in okay so the area of the whole circle where the radius is 35 and so here's the word here okay and um i i i see that um area of the circle is pi r squared okay so 22 sevens is the, my approximation for pi times 35 squared which is 35 times 35 okay and this is the same thing as saying 35 holes and i like this because i can cross out the seven and that'll become a five so that's just 22 times 5 times 35, okay? And I did the work here on the side if you wanted to see, okay? And I get um, basically 3,850 um, square millimeters as my area for the whole circle, okay? That's shaded in. But now, I want to find the area of the cutout circle. Okay, so to find the area of the cutout circle, um, okay, I know that um, the radius is half of 35, okay, which is 35 halves, okay, um, and so when I input in my values here, so the area of that cutout circle is pi r squared, which is 22 7 times 35 halves squared which is 22 7 times 35 halves times 35 halves. And I like this because I see first with the 7 and the 35, okay? So 35 divided by 7 is 5, okay? And 22 divided by 2 is 11. So this becomes 11 times 5 times 35 halves, okay? And 35 halves is 17.5 is my decimal. And 11 times 5 is 55, so 55 times 17.5 is 962.5 square millimeters. And I did my work here if you would like to see. Okay. But I just want to find the area of this red part here without that. Okay. So what do I need to do? Okay. Well, I'm going to take the area of the entire circle that was shaded, which was this, and subtract the area of the white part, which is this. Okay, um, and so I did the work over here, and that becomes 2,887.5 square millimeters, so this is my answer. Alright, just one more example. Alright, um, so a graphic, but we can use a calculator, yeah, okay. A graphic designer creates a design for our company logo. The design is a green semicircle with a white quadrant as shown. Find the area of the green part of the design. Use 3.14 as an approximation for pi. Okay, so I shaded in that white part because we're going to take the area of the semicircle. Okay, so to find the area of the semicircle, okay. I notice that the radius is 160, and we're using 3.14 as an approximation for pi. So the area of the circle is just pi r squared, but we're doing area of the semicircle, which is half of the regular circle. Okay, so half times 3.14 times 160 squared, which is 1 half times 3.14 times 160 times 160. And I'm going to just take half of 160, which is 80. So now I have 80 times 3.14 times 160. And I inputted that in my handy dandy calculator. And I got 40,192 square millimeters. Now let's find the area of the quadrant, okay, of that white part. So the area of the quadrant is 1 fourth times the area of the circle, which is 1 fourth times 3.14. 1 4 times 3.14 times 30 squared, okay, and I inputted that in my calculator and I got 706.5 square millimeters. And then just to find the area of the green, I have to do um, 
the area of the semicircle minus the area of the quadrant, which is 40,192 minus 706.5, and I got 39,485.5 square millimeters. Okay. All right, that's the final answer. Okay. <laughs> This guy always cracks me up um, just the way he looks and how he's acting. He's from a show called Family Matters, um, which is a really old show. So, um, anyways, please solve numbers four and five, and this, these are our last two problems, okay? All right, try your best. I know you're working hard. I'm proud of you. Okay, um, I'll see you. I'll be waiting, and I'll see you soon. Or maybe in a little while. <laughs> Hello, how are you? How was it? Probably pretty tedious, huh? Okay, I'm going to just enlarge my video so I can show you my work better. Um, okay, so I'm assuming you read it, so I'm not going to read it. Okay. Um, what I was thinking, so there's two ways that we could do this. We could find the area of the leftover pizza. We can find the area of this green circle and shade in that missing part, and then minus the area of the quadrant, okay? Or, and I'm gonna do this new way because I did that other way in the examples before, I noticed that, hmm, the leftover pizza is, I know my quadrant part is like one fourth of the whole circle, right? What about the leftover part? What's the fraction that represents it? It's actually one, two, three fourths of the entire circle, isn't it? Do you see that? So here's like one quadrant, here's another quadrant, and here's another quadrant. So that's one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth, and that's three fourths. Oh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the area of the pizza by doing three fourths times the area of the whole circle, okay? And when I input in my values, okay, um, I get this, okay? Um, and basically, I got 2,887.5 square centimeters, okay? Uh, feel free to pause the video. You can take a look at my work and compare it to your work and just see if you kind of went along the same process or even if your answer matches this answer here. Okay. All right. Um, so now I'm gonna just move my video so you can see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, there we go. All right. So for number five, um, I notice that first you wanna try to find. Um, the area of the quadrant here, okay? This is a whole circle, and that would be the quadrant, okay? And so the area of the quadrant, I did it right here, okay? Um, the quadrant is one-fourth of the whole circle, right? So I can put it in my values like so, okay? And I got 1,386 square inches for the area of the quadrant. And then, so that's the area of the quadrant, right? And then now I'm seeing these two semicircles, okay? but I notice that the two semicircles have the same diameter of 42 inches, okay? Um, and so, hmm, you know what? I think I did this wrong here, what I'm noticing, because I input in the diameter instead of the radius, but that's okay. I'll just quickly fix it, okay? So radius is half the diameter, so that's 21. Okay, so this should be 21. And 21. And, ooh, I like this because this is um, 21 divided by 7 is 3. So this would be 22 times 3 times 21, which would be, I'm going to just do it on my calculator really quick. 
1,386. Okay, so then now, oh, it's the same number. So say, for instance, 1,386. And this should be 2 and 1, 6, 7 and 1, 7, 2. 2,772 square inches as the area of the world. Oh, yes, we're done. <laughs> okay, um, so please enjoy the rest of your day. Some rest if you need to. If you went through the whole video in one day, wow, get some rest. Okay, bye.